If you've ever wanted to get your beautiful children's book into a bookstore, then offering it on consignment might be a fantastic option. Hi there, I'm Evie, an award-winning children's author and ghostwriter over on eviejones.com and the creator of Children's Book University. I create videos specifically for children's authors, so be sure to subscribe so you don't miss any of my videos. Many of us primarily focus on online sales, either via a marketplace like amazon.com or barnesandnoble.com or via our own author website where people can purchase our books from us directly. And that's mainly because that's the easiest and least involved way of selling our books. But so many of us would love to see their precious books on an actual physical shelf when they are walking into a local bookstore or any local store for that matter. But besides being able to say that our book is available in multiple different stores, it's also such a wonderful way to support local stores around us. And it's such a wonderful credibility marker we can leverage whenever we are pitching our book to other places like schools and vendor events. So one of my first videos I ever made for you was all about how we as children's authors can get our beautiful books into an actual physical store, whether that's a bookstore or a bookstore chain or any other type of store that might want to carry our book. That video is full of tips on how to get our book into a physical store, so in case you haven't watched it yet, I went ahead and shared the link to it in the description below. And today's video is an extension of that first video because it's all about how we can actually get the physical copies of our books to the store. There are essentially two main ways for a store to stock up on our book. So let's look at each, including each options, pros and cons. The first way our store can get our book is by ordering our book directly from a distributor or printer. That's usually how most traditionally published books find their way into bookstores. The store then adds those books to their inventory and sells them to their customers. In our case, our distributor or printer would usually be KDP or Ingram Spark. In my video about the different print-on-demand publishing platforms, I talk in detail about the royalties we could expect from each of these platforms based on how we decide to set up our book. And I did so for paperbacks and hardcovers. So if you haven't seen this one yet, I went ahead and shared the link to it in the description below. Here it's important to note that most stores, especially if it's a bookstore, will not want to order our books via Amazon, just because Amazon is one of their biggest competitors. That's where setting our book up over on Ingram Spark for our expanded distribution will come in really handy. If you need any help with your expanded distribution strategy, I went ahead and shared the link to my video on just that in the description below. Now, if you're like me, your book is probably mostly optimized for online sales to ensure it provides us with the highest profit margin. That is, we probably have our wholesale discount set at its absolute lowest. When selling through Ingram Spark, we will have to set up a wholesale discount, anywhere between 30 and 55%, depending on the selling region. For the US market, for example, the minimum discount we can set here is currently 40%. We can't set it any lower than that for the US market, so that's what I have my book's wholesale discount set to. And we probably have our book set as non-refundable over on Ingram Spark because again, that's the option that yields the highest profit. Now setting our book to the lowest possible wholesale discount and choosing the no return option to maximize our profit per book might work great for our online sales strategy. But that usually doesn't work as well for an in-store strategy. And that's because bookstores are usually requesting a higher wholesale discount. They generally need to know that they won't be responsible for carrying the cost of any unsold books and they need to know that the publisher will accept the books as a return and refund them for the cost. So our online strategy won't work for stores. So if we don't want to change our settings over on Ingram Spark because we want to keep those optimized for our online sales, the second way a store can get our book is usually a much more attractive one. And that is for the store to add our book to their shelves via consignment. Under consignment, the bookstore doesn't pay for a book upfront. They only pay us when a book is actually sold and anything unsold is simply returned to us. So there are no upfront costs for the store, so they literally have nothing to lose. Rather than the store ordering our book through Ingram Spark, we authors purchase author copies. We receive at our book's printing cost and take those copies to the store for them to sell. And if one of our books sells, we get a percentage of that sale. If our books don't sell, we will simply pick them back up. 
So it's really a win-win situation for everyone involved because stores don't have to take any action and don't have to take on any risk. And we as the author get our books into a local store without having to increase our wholesale discount. Because what many authors aren't aware of is that if stores order books from Ingram Spark or any other distributor directly, they will have to split our set wholesale discount with that distribution platform. So just because we set our discount to let's say 40% doesn't mean the store realizes that discount of 40%. It's in fact much less for them. However, if the store takes on our book via consignment and our wholesale discount is still only 40%, stores are much more willing to agree to this minimum percentage because now they don't have to split that 40% with anyone else. So offering our book on a consignment basis is often a lot more attractive to stores and will make it much easier for them to say yes to our request of adding our book to their inventory. So let's take a closer look at how to go about offering our beautiful book via consignment. First, we will want to make sure that our book has all the elements stores will require it to have. For example, our book has to have its own ISBN. In ISBN, we purchase, not the free one we may have gotten issued from KDP. That's really important. And our book needs a barcode, of course. So if you need any help with your book's ISBN and barcode and want to know why having purchased your own barcode is so important, I went ahead and shared my video on that below. And more often than not, our book will have to have a spine with our title and our author name on it. Again, if you have any questions regarding spines, I went ahead and shared my video on just that below. Second, we will want to make sure the store we are planning to approach is actually offering a consignment option. Oftentimes, stores will provide information on just that directly on their website. And if they don't, we can simply give them a quick call or send them a quick email. If you haven't yet, make sure to watch one, my video on how to effectively approach store managers, two, my video on how to create an intriguing elevator pitch for our precious book so we know exactly what to say to get people interested quickly and succinctly, and three, my video on how to prepare a one sheet that will help us provide the store with all the information they may need about us and our book. I made sure to share all three videos in the description below. One of my favorite ninja tips here is this. Oftentimes, authors only concentrate on getting their books into regular bookstores, but there are so many more places we can offer our children's book to. We only have to be creative enough. For example, some other wonderful places we could consider here for our children's books are museum gift shops, aquarium gift shops, toy stores, and any specialty shops that tie to the topic of our children's book. Here, the number one tip I can give you is to use our book's topic and its characters creatively and to our advantage. For example, if our book is about airplanes and we have a museum on different types of aircraft nearby, perhaps we can give their gift shop a call or better yet, go by with a copy or two of our book already in tow. Or perhaps our book is about protecting the oceans, then our city's aquarium gift shop might be interested in our book. The possibilities here are truly endless. These are all real life examples. I even had a children's book university student who wrote a children's book on breastfeeding and had local lactation consultants start offering her book. And the added advantage here in offering our book in places like this is that our children's book wouldn't have any other competition in the form of other books there. The other thing we will want to make sure to express is that we are a local author, because especially for smaller stores, that's often such a big selling point. Many of these places may even have a prominently displayed local author shelf or section. Just like with anything else, it doesn't hurt to have an already existing relationship with our local stores before asking them to take our book on consignment. So if we are already a regular customer, that would be such a big advantage. But as long as we're pitching our book from the right angle, any store could potentially be a new home to our book. And the easier we make this for store owners, the better chance we'll have for our book to be stocked by that store. Now, stores that accept book consignments usually have a process in place already and will most likely ask us to fill out a submission form. And they might also ask us to provide them with a non-returnable copy of our book for review to take a look at the quality and to make sure our book is a great fit for their customers. Please remember, physical stores have very limited space, so they have to be selective. If they say no to our request to carry our book in their store, please don't take it personally. We can either simply move on to the next store on our list 
or try again a few months down the road. Now, whether the store already has an agreement in place or if we are putting together our own, we will want to make sure it contains and goes over certain elements. There are essentially three main things we will want to make sure our agreement covers. One, anything fee or compensation related. For example, are there any monthly recurring fees we would have to pay? When would the payment be? When we have sold a certain quantity or when a certain amount of time has gone by? What would be the profit split here? Here we will want to make sure we consider what the split is between the bookstore and the author and make sure that we price our book accordingly, keeping in mind that we already paid the printing cost and likely some shipping out of pocket. I previously mentioned the 40% wholesale discount, so that's a very common way of splitting it for consignment cases as well, where 40% is kept by the store and 60% is being paid to us, the author. Here again, the entire 40% would go to the retailer who wouldn't have to split it with an outside distributor. If, however, they're still asking to increase that percentage, perhaps we could come to an alternative agreement. Here, my ninja tip would be to offer to come and host a monthly book reading or book signing, while our consignment agreement is in place. That way, we can hopefully keep the discount percentage low and in turn, bring additional foot traffic to the store. Two, we will want to make sure our agreement covers anything related to our book's inventory. For example, how many copies of our book would the store be requesting? How will we stay informed about our book's inventory status? How often are we meant to check in and bring more copies of our book? And is there perhaps a minimum commitment in terms of weeks or months? And three, we will want to make sure our agreement covers anything related to copies that do not sell. For example, how are damaged books handled? When would we be expected to pick up any books that didn't sell? When does our consignment contract end? LegalZoom has an excellent, very detailed consignment agreement template that is absolutely free that covers all of the points that would be important and relevant to us authors. So I went ahead and shared the link to it in the description below. Now, what are some of the best practices when it comes to consignment? One, ideally we want to keep track of how many books we left with what store on what date ourselves. And to do that, we can simply create a spreadsheet. We will want to check in every month or two to see if any have sold and then update our spreadsheet accordingly. Two, unless the store says otherwise, we only want to drop off a handful of books, not an entire case, especially if it's a store we have never worked with before. That way we can keep our upfront costs relatively low and don't take up any unnecessary space in that store. And three, ideally our agreement contains a clause that specifies that the store will pay us for all copies that no longer appear on their shelf. That way, any copy that is no longer available is covered. So in case one gets damaged, for example, and the store throws it out, we are still getting paid because it's something that happened in the store. Now, are there any drawbacks to offering our precious book on consignment? Consigning our book this way is a fairly low risk venture. If our books don't sell, the store will simply ask us to pick them back up. Worst case, we get the books back and they look a bit rough around the edges. Then we can still use them as demo copies during our next vendor event or use them as giveaways. But because we will want to check in every once in a while, it's always best to stick to stores that are relatively close to home. That way, we won't have to spend too much time on the road, especially if it's a longer consignment agreement. Now, yes, it can be easier and cheaper to reach readers via online platforms, especially if we combine this with the use of social media and targeted ads. And yes, it is easier to maintain a higher profit margin with an online strategy. But if we wish to see our beautiful book proudly displayed on a shelf in a bookstore, boutique, or a museum gift shop, then consignment can be such a great option. And who knows, it may grow into something much bigger. I so hope you found this video really helpful and that it inspired you to give this a try. Please give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't yet. It really encourages me to keep making free videos for you just like this one. Here's to finding our beautiful book in our local store very soon. Bye!